Excuse us, dude, but your shoes are untied. Oh. This is J.K. Hunter Esquire. And this is Steve V1 Rowe. And together we're not Wild, Wild Stallion. Stallion. <laughs> <laughs> It's not even a guitar. <laughs> I'm just going down on some dirty fanny. <laughs> yeah. Oh, welcome to Naga You. How are you doing, Steve? -O? <laughs> not too bad, mate. Not too bad at all. Awesome. Huge thanks to Kyle, aka Grievous King, for choosing this film. What is it? Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey from 1991. Let's fucking do it! Once they made history. I must see to it that you die. Now. They are history. Bill and Ted are dead. <laughs> Bill and Ted's bogus journey. Wow! Bodacious. <laughs> non heinous. Mm. <laughs> Most chaste. A sequel to the 1989 comedy classic Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Please, somebody request the original so we can review it. It was a screwball teen comedy sci-fi about two righteous dudes who time travel to pass their history class. The first was so successful that they got tons of righteous merch, like a Bill and Ted's Excellent Cereal. Mm. A cartoon. Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Adventure. How does the rest of that go? Most outstanding, that's for sure. It's outrageous, <laughs> so bodacious, <laughs> help is always on the way. Oh, I love it, Steve. Oh. Bill and Ted, oh, bogus. Adventures, most outstanding every day. Season one had the voices of the three main lads. Oh, Did it? One. Yeah, yeah, and then season two, <laughs> Jesus. Bill and Ted, excellent adventure. <laughs> I am Bill S. Preston, Esquire. I'm Bill S. Preston, Esquire. And I am Ted Theodore Logan. And I am Ted Theodore Logan. Together, we are Wild Stallions. Wild Stallions. And a live action TV show. Anyway, huge success, so the sequel was never far behind. Reprising their roles are Alex Winter as Bill S. Preston, Esquire. Keanu Reeves as Ted Tito Logan. George Carlin as Rufus, with William Sadler as Death. Colonel Stewart in Die Hard 2? Yeah. And Joss Ackland as top heel Chuck Denomalos. Oh, by the way, Denomalos is the writer producer Ed Solomon's name backwards. Uh. Production designer David L. Schneider and VFX supervisor Richard Urich Urich Urichich. Richard Urasich. And VFX supervisor Richard Urovich had previously worked on Blade Runner. Hmm. Uh, design and makeup's Kevin Yeager, known for Nightmare on Elm Street, and he made Chucky look the way he did in Child's Play. All right, okay. Rock on, mate. Excellent Adventures director Stephen Herrick declined returning, saying it would have been a parody of a movie that was already a parody. So Peter, I mean, he's n he's not wrong. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so Peter Hewitt got the nod in his debut film. How? He just won a BAFTA for his student film, The Candy Show, which got him the gig. Okay. Shot over 10 weeks, initially delayed as Keanu was filming My Own Private Idaho. They filmed five days a week and edited on Saturdays. It was insanely breakneck production as it was shot in January for a release in cinemas in July. Holy shit. Yeah. FYI, this was originally titled Bill and Ted Go to Hell. But hell is a curse word, and so they actually couldn't order it on TV until after 9 p.m. So Hold on. It's only a curse word in one country. <laughs> <laughs> the most ridiculous country of them all. <laughs> Azerbaijan. <laughs> uh, yeah, so best just avoid it. So Bill and Ted's bogus journey it is. With a 6.3 on IMDb and 55% on Rotten Tomatoes, let's see how heinous or non-heinous this film is. off it's the future at bill and ted university they've gone full new gen with everyone only wearing highlighter colors it's amazing foam colored pastel blue a shock of pink 
Vomit Yellow Green. 10 out of 10 future here. The university may look familiar. The Tillman Water Reclamation Plant in Van Nuys, California. It's the same one that represents Starfleet Academy in Star Trek. TNG. Ah, I would not know that, I'm afraid. Look at you, <laughs> having sex. <laughs> you big normie. <laughs> we see their time-travelling guide Rufus, who helped him pass history assignment and win the first film, giving a music class, inviting guest speakers like inventor Thomas Edison and James Barton of Faith No More. Station! Station! Uh, uh, no concern for the space-time continuum here. <laughs> For a fucking rando class. So, Johann Sebastian Bach, you bring him in for class. What happens afterwards? Do you just bring him back to the 18th century? Here, have some lunch. And the course of history is utterly changed. He ends up in a fucking loony bin somewhere <laughs> because he's seen some of the wildest things ever. Yeah, yeah. yeah totally. Unless they have those um, men in black bleeper Ooh, things. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, man, if you show him a light bulb, he'll shit his pants. <laughs> the main villain Darth Vader's into the film. Oh my god, I was like, this guy is Emperor Palpatine crossed with Bishop Len Brennan. Krilly! <laughs> 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 Chuck the Nomalos here, a bald white guy in evil black futuristic attire, much like Vader in Return of the Jedi eight years prior. Actually, Star Wars referenced again as Keanu keeps saying, I've got a bad feeling about this. Uh Uh And in the first movie, there's a scene where Bill and Ted go back to the Middle Ages and they both dress up in armor and they have a fight with with swords, but they're going, zoom, zoom, I am your father, Luke. This was uh, a film that references other films in pop culture before that was the standard, if you know what I mean. It was just kind of clerks and this, you know? Yeah. Mm. Nomalos unveils his master plan to rewrite history. Evil Bill and Ted robots who will murder the originals sink their performance at Bash at the... Is it Bash at the Beach? Battle of the Bands. <laughs> 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 Who'll murder the originals, sink their performance at Bash of the Bands, and change the future. He's totally a robot! So are you, dude! But we're total metalheads! We're robots! <laughs> we're total metalheads! <laughs> Rufus chucks a flying V <laughs> uh, onto the time traveling phone booth, pulling him into the time hole, and we're off to the races! In the present, 1991, <laughs> San, <laughs> San Dimas, California. The wild stallions are at band practice. The babes. 15th century princesses that they brought back to be their girlfriends from the first film. Uh, do you know who they didn't bring back? Go on. The actors who played them <laughs> in the first movie. <laughs> Completely different girls. That's how important they were. Yeah. They meant so much that they've actually swapped their names. <laughs> they got them backwards. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. Elizabeth, Joanna. So, while the babes have since become good musicians, Bill and Ted still suck. The Battle of the Bands organiser, Miss Wardrow, echoes that, yeah, they suck, but still gives them the midnight slot. Ridiculous. Prepare a little. Work on your act. I mean, think of something. Don't worry, Miss Wardrow. We won't let you down. I can't believe Missy divorced your dad. And married mine. At a party, we meet our hero's dads. Oh, it's one of my favourite lines of the film because it's both expository and it's a joke. I can't believe Missy divorced your dad and married mine. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, fuck, that's good. Uh, by the way, okay, these 15th century medieval princesses, they're quite pretty. Yeah, they're fine. Kayfabe shattering. 15th century, you'd be bet. <laughs> you know, of Apples aren't abundant in the 15th century. When was indoor plumbing invented? 1829. There's no way that they look like healthy, vibrant young girls. Like you know what I mean? makeup based on lead and things like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so bollocks. <laughs> they would look like goblins, basically. Or they'd look like those um, Martian troll things from this movie. Yeah. yeah. 
<laughs> with the big fat arses. <laughs> Aim for the cat, dude! Aim for the cat! I'm trying, Evil Ted! I'm trying! <laughs> ah, just missed! Evil Bill and Ted time travel to San Dimas via a phone booth. The fifth best mode of transport traveling through time. What are the other four? <laughs> Steve! Top ten vehicles for time travel. Oh, here we fucking go. Number ten. The Terminator's time displacement equipment. Okay. Pro goes back and forth, both living tissue and mimetic polyalloy. Cons, in the buff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our sound. And it's one way. If you want to time travel more, you'll have to make a new one. Okay. Shit. Mm. Number nine. Quantum Leap Accelerator from Quantum Leap. Yes. Positive, white smoke. <laughs> Negative, you have to dress up like a giant sperm. Yeah. Uh... And you have to have your man Al. Uh, I'd have him in his shirt. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. Number eight. The box from Primer. Primer? Mm, yeah, yeah. Pro, okay, it's very practical. You create your own double and then you become him by waiting six hours in the box. So you get in the box, uh, set a timer for it, you get out. So you're only like six hours in the future. So okay. you can check stocks and stuff like that. And then you wait out the remainder of the time in the box and become yourself. Okay. That's mm. weird, but that's kind of cool. Okay. Mm. Con, only arty wankers have seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Number seven. The hot tub from Hot Tub Time Machine. It's a pretty fun way of going back in time. Mm. Uh, the pro is it's a hot tub. Con, it's a hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Number six. The duffel bag from Fox's Making History. Mm, yeah, shoot-wise creator Julius Sharp couldn't be arsed coming up with a gadget or special effects, so fuck it, get in this bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's not very elegant, though. Number five. The phone booth from Bill and Ted. Yes, positive. Looks cool. Looks yeah. awesome. Negative, extremely cramped. It's absolutely fine for, I'd say, up to three people. Above three people, it's getting pretty fucking rough. Like, you're kind of two and a half men, you know. Men. <laughs> <laughs> Number four. Just kind of kind of blanket statement, other boxes, you know. <laughs> Not too many boxes. <laughs> uh, so the TARDIS from Doctor Who, it's much roomier, and it looks very nice. Well, and it's bigger on the it. inside than it is on the outside. Woo! Uh, uh, from the outside, it looks roughly the same size as the time machine from Blackadder's back and forth which had benches on the inside so you could put your shopping on it. Nice. Last one there gets hacked to pieces by Rod Stewart's great-great-grandfather. Number three. Professor Farnsworth's time machine in Futurama. Mm. Uh, the episode is the late Philip J. Fry. Con is that it only goes forward. It kind of goes against the general rules of time travel, right? Aha. The pro is you fast forward long enough to the end of time, down to the last existing proton to decay, and the Big Bang reoccurs, starting time off again, replicating the exact same universe and events. Okay. That's pretty high fucking sci-fi there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like to prefer, it's not the best, but it is the most comfortable. It's elegant. And that gimmick is extremely clever. It's very cool. Okay. It's also like, just like out of this film, they ripped it off of that film. <laughs> uh, what was the purpose of life anyway? Who knows? Probably some hogwash about the human spirit. Number two. The Time Turner from Harry Potter. Harry Potter. All right, Harry. <laughs> the positive is it's a necklace, very light and transportable. That's pretty handy. That's a definite pro. The negative is it's so good it shatters kayfabe. Apparently, you can only use it for one movie, but why couldn't you just use it to end all of your problems right now? <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go save uh, Buckbeak. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what you use this. Uh, it's kind of World Shatter. Extent. Yeah, fucking hell. And number one The DeLorean from Back to the Future. Of course. Yes. Pro is a classic, timeless, also doubles as a car. Brilliant. And in any time period, it's always the 80s. Yeah. Negative, you can't shoot, get to 88 miles per hour. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty big issue, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it the car weighs about two and a half tons, you know? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, Doc. Uh, are you telling me that you built a time machine? 
Out of a DeLorean? The way I see it, if you're gonna build a time machine into a car, why not do it with some style? Where does Superman fit in flying around the world the opposite way to which the Earth is turning so that it spins backwards, doesn't cause chaos, and just sets the Earth back in time so that he can save Lois? Spoilers. (laughs) See, that's brilliant. I love that, that it doesn't hurt anyone. That's a great pro. Con is only he can go, like no one else can go back in time. If he were to grab Lois, go around the Earth the wrong way, she'd be goop. (laughs) the billions and billions of pounds of uh, centripetal force you are Superman oh Lois come on don't be she knows too much we never want to see you again no way it's over goodbye Evil Bill and Ted ruined the real Bill and Ted's lives by calling them Terminator 2 style, pretending to be the babes and breaking up with them. (laughs) I have the same thing here. I was like, you have to call up me like, hey, mom, how's Wolfie? (laughs) Wolfie's fine, dear. Good job. Your foster parents are dead. (laughs) Well, later we actually get Terminator vision. Yeah. An incredible fortune in stones. Yet I would trade them all for a hand phaser. Bill and Ted are at home watching Star Trek. Popped the original <laughs> series. It's the famous season one episode, Arena, where Kirk fights a Gorn on the Vasquez rocks. Now you might recognize uh, this is famous since, like Hot Shots 2, in Flintstones, in Blazing Saddles, in the A-Team, and in MacGyver. Oh my god. Yeah, now Bill and Ted. They're greeted by evil Bill and Ted. Tons of split screen and creative camera angles to hide when it's just two lads dressed as the main actors. <laughs> <laughs> the budget isn't very big for this film, it's 20 million, but it goes with the kind of humble vibe of the film. But here's the truth, we're totally gonna kill you now. <laughs> no way! Yes way, Ted! They convince him to come with, shuffle our heroes off to the desert, and murder them, pushing them off the very same cliff. What? Catch you later, Bill and Ted! That was so easy, I was like, holy shit! That's it. Boom. Movie's over. (laughs) Awesome. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, This is fucking boss, man. They got Megadeth and Dave Mustaine to write a song for the film. Oh my God. So this song was written for the movie. Yeah. I'm pretty sure most of the budget for this movie went on the fucking songs. Oh man. It's banging soundtracks. Mm. Holy shit. So Megadeth go to hell. I love uh, Dave Mustaine because he's got such an unmistakable voice as well. He's like, hello, buddy. It is <laughs> you. you know? <laughs> yeah, that's you, mate. <laughs> Actually, this is pre-Nirvana 90s where we still get the kind of neon 80s and classic metal. Where it's actual metal and it hasn't quite gotten to the point where it's like, oh, I'm sad and I want to kill myself and <laughs> take heroin <laughs> music. Which, by the way, in case... And he was pissed off. That's literally my favorite type of music. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that's not what it's all about. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we got Slaughter, Winger, Faith No More. Your boy, Steve. Tons of Steve Vai in this. I, That's right. He has a song uh, at the opening. And he has a song on the end credits as well called The Reaper. You know, all those. That's him. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. so good. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, he's got a ton of songs in this. Like oh. all those kind of instrumental, just here's, here's solos. Yeah. That's him. Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Oh, Steve Vai. Mm. And of course, Kiss at the end. Yes. And there's fucking someone big at Battle of the Bands as well. Um, yeah, actually, let's hear a couple of tracks. Kaboom. Great fucking soundtrack. Great soundtrack. Holy shit. It's without question my favourite part of this movie. Like, without doubt. Ted? We're dead, dude. Our dudes wake up pale in the afterlife world. They're dead and ominously greeted by death. William Sadler. He has this kind of evil German. It's supposed to be Czech. 
It's meant to be Czech? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, it's man. Be Czech back in, yeah. <laughs> ich bin ein Berliner. <laughs> Eine große, bad version. <laughs> you may challenge me to a contest, but if you lose, you will remain here in the afterlife forever. They nope out of it and Melvin death. <laughs> Melvin, I'd never heard of this being called a Melvin ever. It's a wedgie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Melvin is a stereotypical name for a geek and nerd, and ah. so you know, you know, it's it's like um the jock and nerd spot. So, okay. Yeah, it's okay. that whole area. It actually, makes sense then. Mm. And they booted up the highway, walking the earth as ghosts. Meanwhile, evil Bill and Ted ruin the real Bill and Ted's lives. They trash their apartment and try to force the babes to put out. <laughs> They try to rape the yeah. fucking babes, mm. the ladies who are most chased. Mm. Uh, leading them to break up with Bill and Ted. Ah, I see, cutting them off. <laughs> so, dead Bill and Ted are at the police station. I hope this works. It worked in The Exorcist 1 to 3. <laughs> <laughs> Work in The Exorcist 1 and 3. The dead stallions try to warn their family. They head to the police station, and what's Ted do? Oh yeah, everybody. <laughs> he uh, holds high kick for three seconds. <laughs> Sweet range. <laughs> Release. <laughs> Shang songs him. I love it. I uh, fucking love it. Uh, yeah, and so we do get the actor. He has a great Keanu Reeves impression here. I thought he- it was quite good. I was watching it thinking he has a slightly bad one with which he then just gives up and <laughs> begins to talk in his normal accent. Do you like how far his nips out were? <laughs> like yeah. My son, Ted Theodore Logan, and his friend, Bill S. Preston Esquire, have been murdered and replaced by evil robots from the future. Unable to convince the police, they go see Bill's mom, Missy, who's conducting a seance with her new age mates. <laughs> I feel the spirits have arrived. They're above them. We're spirits. And it's like, I can see down your mom's top. <laughs> <laughs> They're perving over the lady who has been both of their mass. <laughs> it's so creepy. It's hilarious. Uh, oh, actually, the blokes at the seance are the writers, Ed Solomon, the guy in the glasses, and Chris Matheson in the white shirt. Ah, okay. Oh. Bill and Ted scare the fuck out of them and Missy casts them down to hell. <laughs> Cool tidbit, you'll appreciate this. The book Missy uses to send them to hell is a redressed copy of Stephen King's short story collection, Four Past Midnight. Oh, which I've read, and it's quite excellent. Hmm. Uh, you can see Secret Window, Secret Garden. Ah, it's frame. literally one of my favourite of his books. Oh, what it's happens so good. It? The movie is terrible, by the way. <laughs> Don't watch Stephen the movie. Stephen King movie is terrible. <laughs> Don't watch the movie, but the book's incredible. Okay, okay. All the Tommy Knockers marks. <laughs> So, uh, it being written by who it's written by, it's a story about a writer, of course. Yes. Uh, Wait, does he enjoy a drink? Absolutely. Okay, a little too much? Absolutely. It's a short novella written about a writer who is being harassed by someone, and uh, spoiler alert, it's himself. He has multiple personality disorder. Oh. Huh. Yeah. It's very good. Like, it's better than what I said. <laughs> Maybe he wants me to what? To get confused. Oh, I'm already confused, Pilgrim. They fall all the way down to hell, so we get the fun. Ah. Ah. I love it. (laughs) Brilliant. Brilliant. So I love this joke. I love this gimmick. Mm. But they did it for way too fucking long. It got to the point where it wasn't funny. But then they didn't keep going until it got funny again. Ah. So it just ended on like a dour note for, for, for me. It did get uh, copied in in The Simpsons. <laughs> and when they hit the ground, they're like, oh, that was great. Let's go again. <laughs> awesome. Did you like when the two lads actually land in hell? Ted turns around and goes, Whoa, Metal Album's lied to us, dude. Looks nothing like it. I thought that was an awesome little line. <laughs> it was really good. And they're like, Oh, there's the devil. How do we get his attention? 
a sign of the devil. Devil horns. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, devil dude. Down here. Yeah. We're in hell. It's the classic fire and brimstone, medieval chains, rusted iron teeth, and they're greeted by the devil, who's got beef. <laughs> beef. Here they experience their own personal hell. Ted being barked at by the military dude Colonel Oates to do press-ups for eternity. And Bill being kissed by his hairy-lipped, grouse-mouthed grandma. Which I think he played himself. Very good, yeah. yeah. Alex Winter, yeah. That was non, 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 non heinous. <laughs> How about a kiss for your dear old granny? Oh, they want to nope out of this. So they call upon Death to take them up on his previous offer, challenge him to a contest. If they win, they return to Earth. If they lose, they spend all eternity in nothingness. So what do Bill and Ted choose? (laughs) This is my favourite part of the entire movie. Of course, this film spoofs The Seventh Seal by Ingmund Bergman, where a medieval knight plays a game of chess with Death for his life. (laughs) <laughs> this playing death is quite a famous trope. Oh, definitely. Yeah. In comic books, like in Ghost Rider, he rides against death for a man, his a little girl and himself, and he wins as he boots death into a rev- ravine. <laughs> yeah. In movies such as Pirates 2, Orlando Bloom faces Davy Jones. He's like Death of the Sea. Uh, in a, much like Tuna's Chicken of the Sea. <laughs> <laughs> in a game of Liar's Dice, um, although he loses, Orlando Bloom reveals he just wanted to know where the key to the dead man's chest was so he could steal it later. Nice. Of course, in music, Tenacious D have a rock off with Bielsa Boss. I fucking love this song. Yeah. It's like, you, you saw it off and you'll have to pay our rent. Yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, they lose, but they're able to send them back to hell. This kind of sort of victory, it was commemorated by not the greatest song in the world. (laughs) (laughs) It was just a tribute. Oh, yeah. Uh, It's similar to Guitar Hero 3, where you shred battle the devil to beat the game. Also in video games, Dante's Inferno. The first battle tutorial is fighting the Reaper, where Dante crushes him and takes his side. Yeah. You know what? I think that's a game that got a pretty hard rap. It was fine. It was obviously a God of War clone, but Mm. it was a pretty decent one. Hmm. And just my favourite is in the start of The Young Ones, an episode called Nasty. Death is literally playing chess with a dude. He's beating a chess. He clears the board and says, bollocks to this. Checkmate. Bollocks to this. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. So do Bill and Ted play a stoic game of chess? No. no. <laughs> they play... You sunk my battleship. Yeah, that's awesome. They play battleships. A hilarious subversion. You have sunk my battleship. Excellent! Yeah! Best two out of three. The lads beat him at battleships. Sore loser death then unsuccessfully tries his hand at Cluedo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he blows his wad and he guesses too early and he gets it fucking wrong. Best three out of five. Electronic football. Best of seven. Damn right. All right, then finally Twister and Death admits defeat and is now their servant. With a question, my favorite part of this movie. I thought it was great. It was really clever. William Sadler did a fucking great job playing Death. Mm. Looks the part. He was saying that uh, on set, there was a, an orbit of uh, staff always around them because he'd sweat so much. He had a bald cap on. He said, oh man, I should have just shaved my head for it. But he's actually, he has a cameo. He's the uh, English, the stuffy English dude at the end of the film going, oh my, I like it. What's this on the <laughs> television? I tell you. But he was just saying he was really hot in this really cloak and they're outside in the desert and he's Ugh. like, you know, he, he pull his ball cap kind of off and just <laughs> push all the sweat as he goes. And, you know, all of his makeup would go onto his black robes and stuff like that. So he had to be constantly touched up. And just to close it off this whole segment, uh, Bill is like, hey, Ted. Don't fear the reaper. (laughs) (laughs) Ted. What? Don't fear the reaper. I heard that. Bill 
and Ted and Death travel to heaven, which is all white and lavender and dodgy CGI. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they rumble a couple of folks to get into heaven. <laughs> this is so great. They know that they're not going to get into heaven. Look so, at the way they do. So they beat up people, they take their clothes, and they lie. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking brilliant. They get past St. Peter quoting poisons. Every rose has its thorn. Just like every night has its dawn. Oh, just like every cowboy sings a sad, sad song. <laughs> Has a thorn. They seek an audience with God, asking for help, finding the smartest scientists in the universe to aid them. And they also hot dog to God about wild stallions. Yeah! <laughs> the smartest scientist in the universe is not from Earth. He's an alien made of two farty troll doll dolls. 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 Fuck. <laughs> it's the toll trolls. Yes. <laughs> Two farty troll doll things called Station, who agrees to come back to Earth and help them defeat evil robot usses by creating good robot usses. <laughs> I don't get it. Like Their gimmick is that they can travel back and forth in time. But in this movie, they're like in heaven and hell. So they nearly have the entire history of people to like choose and gimmicks to do. And they go for this terrible little midget in a suit thing with a big fat Martian arse. I just, it was so stupid. I hate it. Aww. Plus you got an excellently huge Martian butt. Station. Yeah. So they go gather supplies at Lowe's. We get two good gags from death. He's uh, contemplating trading his side in for a rake. I did like that. I did like that. And he's walking past a smoker and he's like, cereal soon? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was good. Um, uh, uh, okay, Death, he hangs around Bill and Ted for this entire adventure, this bogus journey. What happens to everyone else who died since he left? Purgatory? They're just waiting around, is it? Yeah, they're just ghosts wandering the earth. All right. Lonely. That seems like Seems like you really should be on your job here, mate. You know, you're, you're taking a lot of days off here. We see what stations come up with. Clunky robot versions of Bill and Ted. It's very clunky, very 80s. A lot of charm to it. Do you like how he made both of the good robots in his rape van? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, diddlebots are go. <laughs> it's probably a good idea that he didn't do a good job, that they look so shit and like robots and not like them, because you can't have three Bill and Ted's on the stage at the same time. Oh, the green screen would be so bad. <laughs> <laughs> they arrive at the auditorium because it's time for your fourth annual San Dimas Battle of the Bands Mountain Dew Pretzels and Cheese Reebok made event. <laughs> The Battle of the Bands. Fuck, is that Primus? <laughs> it fucking is. Oh, holy shit. No wonder, actually, a $25,000 cash prize and a two-year recording deal. Oh, wow. Mm. That's uh, pretty fucking hefty mm. for a high school. It's on TV. Maybe it's a big thing. Oh, okay. You know? Primus there, they're playing Tommy the Cat. And he's like, yeah, see it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I fucking love it. Evil Bill and Ted's plan is about to come to fruition, sink their performance at Battle of the Bands, and also murder the babes live on TV. Real Bill and Ted arrive just in time to confront their evil counterparts and fight them. I just noticed, you look out in the crowd, this is a full crowd. This is a concert. They stayed until midnight <laughs> to see the worst band in the world perform. Yeah, dedicated, man. So kind. How did the Rock'em Sock'em Bill and Ted do? Two hits murdered the big fucking end of level boss is finished this is like when you play uh arkham origins and you take on shocker and they build up this boss fight for ages and then batman just batters him and it's <laughs> over it's great yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah they go four four down up johnny cage decapitation <laughs> but however do you do the extra bit and get the multiple heads knocked off ah that's a usual down low punch low kick and block yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> And explode the hill robot dummies, which is probably back forward, down forward, low punch. I'm gonna nice. say. Yeah. <laughs> Your Mortal Kombat 2. Obviously, this is 2, yes. right? Yeah. Your Mortal Kombat 2 knowledge is terrifying. 
Did you have to look these up or do you just no, know no, them? of course I know them. Yeah, do you yeah. even have it written down or are you doing it off the no, top I of your head? No, I can do it. All. What do you want to know, Stephen? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Sub zero freeze and shatter. Easy. Foot foot down, I kick four down, foot foot high punch. No, dude, forget about it. Man. Yeah. yeah. Sweet range, right close, yeah. Sub zero wins. Fatality. Catch, Catch you later, Bill and Ted. Catch you later, Bill and Ted. Actually, they did have an alternate ending where Bill and Ted actually bring themselves back from the future every minute for... Be, 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 be. <laughs> <laughs> they bring themselves back from the future every minute for 10 years to build like an army of Bill and Ted's to go fight them. Test audiences said it was shit and so they cut it. Okay. Darth Nomalos appears for the final showdown, changing every TV channel to him, hot-dogging about his master plan. Then cut to an Italian cretin watching football on his TV. It's so funny. In the white theater, and he's just like <laughs> belching noises. <laughs> 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 like, this film should be about him. Bello, 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 Huge TNA booking revelations as they, aha, Darth Spader here. We'll go back in time and drop a sandbag on you. And also a cage. But I'll go back in time and get a key. And a second gun. It's so funny. They just absolutely play around with their own rules. They did this in the first movie as well, where Bill and Ted were trying to break out of the cop shop. They went forward in time and left like a key in a bush so that they could get that when they were coming back. Just... Yeah, mate. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Mm -hmm. uh, but they explain it saying that only the good guys can rewrite history. So the second gun that Nomalos has is a prop gun. And Ted's detective dad, take him away, boys. Take him away, toys. Mommy, me, me. Me, mama, me. Originally, Nomalos was going to be sent to hell where the robot Bill and Ted annoy him for all eternity. I think that would be a good way to end it, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But then that would be implying that robots have a soul, which is like a whole oh. new fucking movie. Oh, Silicon Heaven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think they'd uh, care. <laughs> 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 That's the heels vanquished. What about Rufus? Miss Wardrobe comes out and starts to strip. Man, good times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's really Rufus. Bad times. <laughs> George Carlin. I don't, I don't want to see that. Who else would have given them a spot at Battle of the Bands? <laughs> Unencumbered to now play, Bill and Ted realise they still suck at playing, so nip out for a quick 16 months and arrive instantly again to that point in time with their now wives, sons, and these lads are now awesome at guitar. What could they possibly play? A wanky dual guitar solo. Yeah. <laughs> it does morph into Kisses God Gave Rock and Roll to You, which is obviously a great song, but it's like the best band in the world is a cover, cover band? It's a cover band, yeah. yeah. As we see a super happy end of the movie, kind of flying newspaper headlines to see us out, Bill and Ted achieve world peace. Death wins the Indy 500. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. I, I didn't know I could run that fast. <laughs> and the heel guy, Nomalos, marries Missy. Oh, there you go. Okay. It's hilarious. Um, actually, in the comic book, Bill and Ted go to hell. Missy convinces Nomalos to go save Death, who is trapped in hell, so he can be remembered as a baby face and not the villain. Okay. Yeah. And Bill and Ted's final shot is they rocked on Mars. Guitars. Bondos and condos. That's a shame. Good luck, boys. Um, I have to say, like, I think Kiss, they're a very 70s rock band, and I don't like Kiss. I don't like Kiss. But, like, the song has been stuck in my head since I watched the film. <laughs> this is a good song. Yeah. yeah. It is a good L tune. It's such an end-of-the-night song. I was, like, really annoyed. You can't open with that song. That is a closing song. Agreed completely. But then again, all of these people in the audience have been sitting there for three hours, so maybe it, it would work, you know? Well, it's true. And, uh, okay, so Kiss, you can see us out. <laughs> what about the Kiss Demon? Uh, oh! oh <laughs> Brian Adams or Bloke B? Oh. <laughs> Bloke B. Was it Dale Torborg? Yeah, very good. D Dale the Tuborg. Tuborg. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Imagine if the Wild Silence got Tony Schiavone to play them in instead. Oh. It's the biggest band in the world! 
Girls. <laughs> you one of the best. You got the best. The hottest man in the world. Kiss. Welcome to the Aftermath. Steve, my boy, what did you think of Bill and Ted's bogus journey? I'm quite mixed on it. I watched Excellent Adventure first, and I really like that movie. It's charming. It's funny. It's a definite, like, period piece. (laughs) (laughs) Um, With two very likable characters. And I think that movie being so good kind of made this movie feel a bit... Mm, oh. Definitely. It's slightly worse in every single way. Oh. Like, it's got a slightly worse plot. It's got a slightly less charming script. But their hair and their clothes are very more 90s. <laughs> They're definitely more you know? 90s. What it does have that's better is soundtrack is... Oh, banging soundtrack. Fucking great. I loved it. Death was the absolute highlight of this movie. Uh, I thought he was fantastic. But yeah, overall, like you mentioned earlier, where someone said that they didn't want to come back and make this movie because it would feel like a parody of a parody. He was right. And it does feel like a parody of a parody. But in saying that, it's not a bad movie. It's just nowhere near as good as part one. And I'd recommend watching it still. Okay. Actually, I'll just include my thoughts at the kind of aftermath segment, if that's cool. Um, I want to get to our most righteous ultra bra who chose this. Kyle, aka Grooviest Viking. What did he have to say? I chose it because I love it. And I don't mind if it gets ripped apart. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, It just makes me happy. I like the bitchin' soundtrack that probably turned me into the metal guy I am now. Yeah. I like that even when they die, they're somehow never pessimistic. I like that they took the initial film's main plot point, these two lovable fools have access to a time machine, and basically disregard it entirely for an adventure through the afterlife. Like if Batman Begins and Dark Knight was mostly about him golfing or something. (laughs) That's a really bizarre choice. I just love it, man. Not amazing with the acting or directing and probably inferior to its predecessor, both with charm, a great look and killer music. This film is a boy. Oh, okay. That last sentence knocks it out of the park. This movie is the definition of a boy movie. It's not great, but it's definitely charming, likable, and you kind of want it to be great. Mm. Yeah, good time. Cheers, good time. mate. Cheers, oh, mate. Cheers, Kyle. I uh, really appreciate it, mate. So they'd seen it. It took us three weeks before we had to show it. So, Peter Hewitt, his first film, how did he get on? Uh, okay, Bill and Ted 2 cost double to make than the first, brought in slightly less. Uh, so gross $37.5 million, which is about... 81 million in today's money. Uh, his director's cut he said the evil usses were really evil, uh, much darker, but test audiences didn't like it, so they made him quite jokey. I, uh, I think that audience probably got it right. You don't want Bill and Ted to be dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a quintessential early 90s movie with Americans. I think it was the right call. Yeah. He said it would have the dark version would have played well in Britain. Uh, I was just thinking of like 89 Batman and then Batman Returns with Michelle Pfeiffer is a much darker sequel and I'm glad he didn't go full darkness with it like Tim Burton did. Yeah. And yeah, honestly, um, I intentionally didn't rewatch Excellent Adventure because I would like to review it and like I really enjoyed watching this. Uh, Obviously very much a time capsule and you kind of have to take it as is. Like if you're watching the Tom Green show, it's not the Green Tom show or watching, (laughs) you know, it's easy going, it's not important, uh, it's not deep. I love that both guys, they're unrelentingly positive. Which is very nice in this modern world. Yeah. When they meet death, you know, after spending a day with Bill and Ted, look what they've done to him. <laughs> you know, think about all the good that they put into the world just by being around. So, you know, good time. it's good to be around people that happy and positive and with such a sunny disposition. So, good times. We want to say thank you to you, the fans. We do. Because it looks like we might... Actually... Hopefully... 
make a movie this summer. Bill and Ted 3. Face the music. Yes. Oh, uh, talked about a threequel since 2007, and they finally got financing and pulled the trigger on it. Started production in March 2019. It will be... Are you serious? Yeah, it will be released. Is released. Was released in August 2020, depending on when you watch this review. Wow. Bill and Ted face the music. Um, Actually, I don't like the naming scheme. Excellent adventure, bogus journey. Yeah, it was like radical return yeah right? yeah yeah it's some, something like that you know yeah anyway it's about a middle-aged bill and ted they're warned by louise from bob's burgers uh christian shall uh they need to create a song to save all life on earth and the universe and so work with their daughters uh not sons like in this one uh <laughs> <laughs> they've retconned it good billy logan and thea preston and also old friends and famous cameos to get her done okay i'm down for this no way! How'd you like our song? It's a little on the dark side, but you know, that's cool. All right, and so that will do it for our Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey review. Thank you, uh, Kyle, aka Grooviest Viking, mate. Really enjoyed watching and chatting about this. So, Absolutely. Cheers, mate. Oh, my God. Rock and roll. What have we got coming up next? You won't be able to contain yourself. Fuck. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Troll 2 is coming up next time on Nogger U. And you can see all of our other past uh, Nogger U reviews. Actually, I'll just leave a link in the description. But if you click the tab that says Nogger U reviews, you can see them all! Ha! And watch them and enjoy them and then hot dog about them. Um, nice. So it's a goodbye from V1. Take a boo. And myself, Jay Hunter, giving you a course clear on Bill and Dad's bogus journey. <laughs> and remember. <laughs> 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 <laughs>